I'd call to order the September meeting of the Ascension, uh, Ascension East Ascension Gravity Drainage District. Madam Secretary, uh, roll call. Please note that Councilman Thompson and Councilman Cullen are both working tonight. I'd like to ask everybody to please stand for the invocation by Captain Chris Lohr and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with us tonight. We ask you to give us strength to get through our daily routines. We ask you to give us humility in all we encounter. We ask you to give us wisdom as we make decisions. And having recently uh, passed the anniversary of September 11th, we just want to thank you again for all the men and women in service to this country and uh, ask you to, to be with their families uh, as, they, as they serve us and, and protect our freedom. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chris. I want to let everybody aware of public comment. Uh, anybody wishing to speak on any agenda item, please come out and fill out a card with the secretary and you'll be allowed three minutes when that comes up. The chair would uh, would entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the August 3, 2009 so meeting. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Benny Johnson, second by Chris Lohr. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. For the chairman's report, Announcements I don't have any. We uh, will have an update on our capital drainage improvements on our projects, and we have several folks from the from engineering here. Move right into the drainage reports, Mr. Rue. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of commission, Parish President, I'm going to run through this real quick. Uh, as always, we have a report of our work orders to our chronograph system. And I ask you to go through it and, and uh, look at uh, things going on in your district. If you have any questions, please give us a call. And uh, anytime uh, after the meeting or tomorrow, and we'll try to go in more detail with you about those work orders. Major channel improvement program. Shadow Creek, 30% complete. Bird, Bird Island Ditch, which is part of the same project, is 90% complete. And we're also doing a lot of spall removal on Smith Bayou, which is 90% complete of this fall removal. Capital Improvement Projects Program. Marvin Bro Pump Station Enclosure. Of course, construction has begun on that uh, project. And uh, right now, the um, construction itself of the project is about 10%, but the total project, including engineering, uh, is about 75% uh, complete. Mm -hmm. Again, it's in construction phase right now. Uh, and again, to uh, add to that, that, we are on schedule. Everything's looking so far looking good. Marvin Bro Pump Station expansion, 30% design plans has been delivered to our office, and we are in the process of reviewing those plans now. We have a walkthrough probably in the next couple of weeks with Burke Klein Peter Engineers to go over that 30% design, and after that point, we're going into uh, <coughs> final design. Again, they're actually starting to work on final design. Um, on things that they can uh, uh, do without the formal acceptance of those uh, third percent plans uh, approval. But again, all of this should be done by the end of the month. That project is, is on schedule as well. Henderson Bayou Pump Station is in final engineering progress uh, uh, process. And again, that, uh, like the other projects, mm -hmm. are on schedule for bid next year. Law Ridge Levy upgrade, the existing levy. We are still in the permitting process for that project, 85% complete. Grubbing and clearing is complete, and the specifications and bid documents for the dirt being, it's being uh, formulated at this time. And again, we're about 85% uh, with those uh, specifications and bid documents. We are holding back and we'll hold back on bidding out for dirt for that project until the bid documents or the bid, uh, permitting uh, process is complete. We had the per permits in hand. We don't want to jump ahead ourselves and do some uh, uh, bidding out before we get the permits in hand. And we're hoping to have that done within 
30 to 60 days have has have the uh, the permits in hand so we can go forward with the bid process for the dirt NRCS debris removal project and grant permits has been received construction plan specifications and assurance plan was submitted to NRCS for their review and they're in the process of that review at this time uh, it's still on, on uh, if they can get that information or that uh, uh, authorization back to us we still should have this uh, project completed by the end of the year LA 22 drain structure we uh, is being reviewed the permit is being reviewed by DOTD uh, it's a it's a um, process that we have to go through it's also a possibility that uh, originally we had looked at just adding uh, box covers to the uh, uh, the covers that's there just to enlarge the opening and we're now looking and reviewing the um, possibility of actually putting a bridge there and uh, so that's additional work that needs to be done again we're gonna uh, working with DOTD on on that process but uh, we're looking at which one may be more beneficial to us adding box covers or the bridge of course the bridge is a, a more capacity and uh, so that may be changed to a bridge from box covers uh, Muddy Creek Bridge replacement road elevation um, RFPs was changed to RFQs instead of request for a proposal we're going to request for qualifications and it's in the process of being advertised for that right now Law Ridge Levy extension uh, right now, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Jake Lambert with GSA to go over some of uh, the where we're at on that uh, project, the, both the uh, Law Ridge Levy Extension with Punchline Levy District, uh, Conway Panama uh, pro project with Punchline Levy District also. Hey, how you doing, guys? Uh, Jake Lambert with Glen Shaheen Associates. Um, we uh, currently have three projects we're working on for the that are, uh, the East Ascension Gravity Drainage District is involved in. Uh, the first one is the Laurel Ridge Levee Extension Project. This is a, a project that's been around for a while. Uh, people have been throwing this idea around for a long time. There's never really been any detailed study done to investigate the, the true feasibility of this project. Um, this was, uh, if y'all remember, a 50-50 uh, cost sharing, I believe, with Pontchartrain yes. Levee District. Um, and, and the good thing about this project is it, it it's going to uh, ultimately form the northern end of the hurricane protection west shore hurricane protection levy that the Pontchartrain levy district is is working on so it's it's one of those projects that uh, or, the, or I should say the reason that the Pontchartrain levy district is involved is it, it's going to complete their levy system that they are working on right now uh, we've done our preliminary engineering on this project and uh, determined that there are some, some, some true merits to this project. Uh, it, it appears uh, that, that we can provide some uh, flood stage reductions uh, with, with this levy. Um, and, and we are in the process, we have a meeting on Thursday with the Corps of Engineers to determine uh, what exactly the environmental uh, what they can allow us to do from an environmental and wetland standpoint. Uh, and that's really going to be the, one of the, the crucial factors on this project is uh, exactly how the, the, the wetlands uh, issue is going to end up being played out. But uh, strictly from an engineering standpoint, it, it appears to be a, a good project. Now, it's going to be a, a fairly expensive project. Um, we have not completed our economics on this project, but it's going to be fairly expensive uh, to, to protect uh, you know, uh, I mean, it, there's a lot of families that live in, in that area, but uh, we, we have not completed that yet, and we're still working on it. We'll, we'll definitely keep y'all posted, though. Yeah, Jake. Yes, sir. Real quick, the, uh, the path that, that y'all looking at on the Laurie's Levy, please, please explain, we have explain to the commission at, where you're at. Sure. At. We have looked at, uh, and, and a lot of this feedback started uh, from the parish, and then we had an initial meeting with the Corps to go over three levy alignments um, but it will it will it will uh, begin at the end of Gold Place Road which is where the, the current Law Ridge levy uh, stops and we'll we'll come up uh, to the north and we have three different alignments one is going to be going straight almost due north to tie into the end of Jim Myers Road is, is where the the natural high ground is back there uh, that's the most direct and shortest route the second alignment begins and ends in the same place, but along, on that alignment, we try to minimize the impact as closely as possible to 
the wetlands, okay, which is that's a core cool requirement that you always minimize wetlands. Um, and uh, the problem with that is that it significantly adds to the to the length of the levy and therefore the construction cost, quantity of material to be moved, <coughs> and, and some of those things. One of the things that we're looking at, and we're, we're not sure exactly how they're going to handle this, is we're looking at op operating uh, this levy system um, with, an, with an open gate uh, that would allow, under normal circumstances, water to flow in and out of the structure. So we would minimize those impacts to the wetlands. Uh, and, and we were in the process of working on this with the Corps. And they, they really are going to be the, the decider as to how that happens. Uh, but obviously, uh, the most efficient would, route would be the shortest one. And that would be uh, you, your hardest work to work with it in and out with, with, uh, with gates and stuff is be the straight path. That, as, as of right now, we, um, I feel like that's, a, that's the, the, probably the cheapest. The, the benefits are the same, whether the levee goes straight north or if you zigzag it around. I mean, you're still protecting the same number of houses. So obviously, the most shortest uh, and, and cheaper route would provide the most bang for your buck, per se. So, uh, yes, and, and we really are just, we're going to have to see what the Corps says, to be honest. Yeah. Mr. Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Jake, I guess a few years back, probably a different administration, CDM came with a little bit of report and uh, with a mapping of three different ways. Yes, sir. And their map that was straight north, the Corps was not happy they, with that they, map. As far as I understand, they shot that alignment down. Yeah, I know it's the shortest route, possible. but it's all wetlands. And yes, sir. The Corps was not happy with that route. Correct. I know they were more happy with the longer route, but definitely more costly. I think at the time it was, what, $35 million or better. Yes, sir. Well, what we've done, um, we've actually looked at a different approach uh, than, than some of the previous uh, firms that were working on this project. Uh, th their initial proposal was to use a pump station, so a forced drainage system, essentially. And obviously, the, the Corps is very hesitant about uh, putting any wetlands behind a forced drainage system. So uh, in our initial meetings with them, we told them, look, we'd like to look at this alignment again, but with a different approach of, of, of having a gravity drainage system, or basically a system that would operate very similar to natural conditions, uh, except during a storm event. And so that's the, that's the difference for, for how we're trying to push this, this project. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. And I, th I thought that would be a special interest to you based on your experience uh, it, with that. One other and thing uh, that You feel that the core is a little bit, looking at a little bit, with a little bit more open eyes right now. Thus far. Thank so you, we, sir. Uh, and, and Thursday, we're going to have some of the Do you need events. anything from us on that? Uh, we, we've invited Mr. Bill, and mm -hmm. obviously any of you guys, I know y'all are busy, but any of you guys that would like to come, we're going to have uh, several people from the Pontchartrain Levy District mm -hmm. uh, attending the meeting Thursday morning at the core. So open invitation, I mean. And, and on, another, on that same issue, I just want to let everybody on, on, the, on this board, on the council, you know, if you have something that's of interest to you, one of these capital projects, uh, we'll try to get Bill and the administration to keep us in touch when, when they were having meetings and things mm -hmm. that, that we may go like we did for the uh, valued engineering sessions and things like that. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely been, some, sometimes, I guess, maybe the private sector chooses not to have an elected official there. It might you know, square away something one way or the other, but, but I mean, I believe everybody on this board is, is just trying to do absolutely do what's right for the areas. You it, know? It's been my experience that uh, the more more representation that you have at these meets, because they'll, they'll show up with 20 people, and it'll be three of us maybe, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the more representation you have, the more local interest that you have in a project, the more willing they are to, 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 to listen. So that's, you know, as I said, we're going to have some, some uh, Pontchartrain Levy District guys, and uh, I think Mr. Bill is going to try to come. So, one, one, one more question, Jake. Yeah. Far as far as the extension, you know, they had talked that they were just going to extend it to Prince Road, which I'm totally against. Just going to right. Prince Road. Right. If we're going to do this project, we have to do it entirely levy system, or uh, several residents are going to get hurt big time by it. We uh, that is the direction we are going, correct? Yes, sir. We okay. we have. Uh, I know uh, in the past. They looked at just taking it, extending it, I don't know if it's 1,500 feet or a couple thousand feet to Prince Road. 
we, we have not even looked at that approach. We want to go, if we're going to do it, we would like to go all the way and, and get around the, the Lake Martin community. Great. Thank you. And, and by the way, uh, you know, we, we'll have some of these alignments if, if you all want to look at it. And it it's, uh, we have some room to wiggle with these things. So we definitely will need you guys' input. Yeah. On this, and, and your and your constituents. Out. Yeah, and one thing one thing that happens over time is uh, you guys that's been around longer than than me have seen is that sometimes you know with zoning and everything you, you try you try to protect people and that you get little fingers of homesteads that go down deep into the swamp and things like that. So you you know you you burden to to take care of those folks also, which is a good thing. So you got to go in and around. You can't cut them off. So your approach that the charter we gave you guys when you when you got this and Punch Train Levy District did is try to find some kind of medium that will take care of that whole problem and enter into the West Shore project. Yes, sir. That will well, finalize that, the West Shore project that starts three parishes down. There is some potential for federal dollars, uh, depending on how the benefit to cost ratio turns out. There is some potential for federal dollars because it would tie into the, to the uh, West Shore Hurricane Protection Levy. But we don't know yet. I mean, that, that's going to, you know, we're at the very beginning stages of this. Basically, just so you know real quick, um, they, they asked us, um, the formal process would be to do a, uh, what they call a 905B reconnaissance report. Mm -hmm. Then you go in, and that's a very basic little number crunching, what's the scenarios, what's the options. Then you go into what's called a feasibility study. Then at that point you would you would determine if the project is actually feasible. We 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 wanted to kind of shortcut that, find out if we can even make this thing work, and uh, that's what we're in the process of doing. But we are following the core's format, uh, so that if we determine it is a feasible project, we'll jump right in and we'll have the report written ready to submit it as a minor file. So, Mr. Shakespeare, did you hit something? Anybody else? Go ahead, Jake. All right. Uh, Another project. Two, two other projects that we have. One uh, is the Ball Bayou Drainage Study. This this project is uh, has is is two parts essentially. Uh, number one uh, is the the drain, drainage improvements. Uh, we did an analysis on the, on Boyle Bayou and all its tributaries, which is uh, essentially the area that runs uh, between Highway 44 and Highway 30. That and I 10. Okay, it's about a 3,000 acre base and it also drains Lamar Dixon and Cabela's uh, and a good, good portion of the, uh, the, the, the south part of the city of Gonzales. Uh, they're having some nuisance flooding, some, no, no significant structural flooding, but uh, anybody that's been back there to the shooting range knows there's some, there's some, some pretty, pretty, pretty big problems back there. Uh, that, that was the first part of our project. We finished this probably uh, almost a year, a year ago in April. Uh, we, we submitted uh, just some channel improvements, some structures that, that could be changed out under, under highways, simple, simple, relatively simple things. The second part of this, and, and that, that's, that was done about a year and a half ago, uh, the second part of this project, which is taking a little bit more time to develop, uh, uh, is, is we're looking at a comprehensive plan for this area concerning uh, the detention basins. Okay, and as y'all know, or may or may not know, there's, there's a lot of a lot of issues when you're dealing with commercial developments and and their detention requirements. And so we would we wanted to look at uh, developing a master plan for this entire drainage basin, and and and, and essentially creating a, a plan for uh, regional detention basins that that uh, there would be a system where uh, a developer instead of having to put a pond on his valuable uh, you know, prime real estate could could purchase uh, uh, rights to to the detention would, that would be created in these regional basins, and we finally kind of got a handle on it. We had uh, some help uh, uh, on some real estate some real estate costs, so SJB helped us out with that, uh, and uh, we are ready uh, to, to begin meeting with you guys and talking to you guys about this. The, the project has some merits. Um, like anything, I, I don't think it's it's, it's not a it's not a, uh, necessarily a cheap uh, fix. But uh, when you start looking at the value of the real estate that you would be uh, freeing up for commercial uh, endeavors, it, 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 it's pretty interesting, and it's going to probably uh, inspire some debate. Uh, and this is uh, by by another token, this is a 
the first time this has been done in the parish. We are looking at it. Uh, if this is successful or can be successful, uh, it, it's the intent that this could be de uh, replicated in other drainage basins in the parish. Mr. Chairman, I've got a question. Yes, sir. Mr. Rowe, I think we talked about this several years back on this little study. You know, I think there was a drainage issue, but I don't think it was any structures that was uh, threatened by this particular flooding. Oh, on, that you can on a ball by ball by. As more, it started from the city of Gonzales, I think, right. with uh, Mr. Mark McConnell when he was on board, and he's the one who actually got it started. And uh, the main, the main uh, reason for it. I was don't think it was a major issue. Is what I'm commercial, thinking. Commercial, commercial developments yeah. within the city had the most impact, uh, but at the same time, uh, they were contributing a lot to problems further down Ball Bayou. We get pet behind Southwood and uh, okay. and some other. Yeah, I knew we had some issues south. there. Yeah. So they were impacting. Uh, parish uh, people, but of course drainage is, is within the city too. So the whole purpose was to see how we could um, regulate uh, the the main push. But how how could we regulate some of the commercial developments within the city uh, so we don't impact people outside the city further down um, down the bayou? Um, but all of this, like Jake says, is, is really comprehensive, and it's uh, it, you really get into impact fee for commercial developments. And when you get into the impact fee situation, that's a whole ball game by itself. Like some of you know, when we got into commercial impact fees, uh, you, got, you got a, a lot of legal avenues you have to go through before you can get into that type of situation. So while it, it, it is something that we can look at, it is very hard because of that impact fee situation and how you have to spend the money and the timeline you have to spend the money in and stuff like this. But so again, it's something we review. So you feel it's feasible to do a master plan on this small basin? That's what I'm saying coming from you, Mr. Bill? Actually, we just need to see the figures that GSA has right now and see the problems in implementing some of those uh, projects. Mostly uh, how we can implement uh, getting fees from commercial developments and buy uh, property and build detention, area detention ponds. Okay. Uh, you know, as part of that process, it's very hard because again, you're collecting a tax, you're collecting impact fee fees from commercial developments to implement positive um, drainage facilities downstream. And it, it's again, it's, it's a long process. We're just starting the, the, uh, the process of looking at it right now. Yeah. I know it's long. I think, Jake, you might have a time frame when we started this project as far as the study of it. You don't have uh, I, I don't it's know. been, it's been you know, three or four or five uh, years, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm just kind of refreshing some of that. Yeah, I guess the question is, have we acquired what we originally went out to study and find? Well, yes, sir. And as I said, the, the proposed improvements to fix any issues You've been there, turned in. We got that, and okay. we are ready to, you know, you got, we, we have our report, and I guess it's going to just take a matter of sitting down with you guys and figuring out how you want to proceed with it. Well, the first, to answer your question real briefly, uh, again, you know, Jake is saying that they had two two uh, parts to this study. One is just the drainage impact, the drainage structures, replacement of, of uh, bottlenecks. We have that, and we're already planning on uh, moving on an upper end of Ball Bayou all the way to St. Landry Road with improvements of drainage structures and some improvements of uh, Ball Bayou itself based on their analysis that they already gave to us. The second part is more comprehensive. It has to do with area detention of the mm -hmm. whole basin. And that's something that we'll continue to look at and evaluate. But we are using and we'll be moving on uh, uh, parts of their evaluation very soon on portions of Ball Bayou. And one other thing, uh, this, this study that we've done uh, actually leads into another project that's, that's being funded more primarily by the Pontchartrain Levy District, but that's the, the Panama uh, Bayou Conway Panama, Panama. Canal project, mm -hmm. which Ball Bayou is a part of that basin. So we've used that information that we have from the Ball Bayou study. We're incorporating that into our models uh, for for the the master plan for the the Panama Conway Basin. Uh, and I could, if y'all want to jump to that, I can. Or I think questions. Mr. Shake Snyder. Well, I, <clears throat> I just wanted to clear something up. But the the master plan that they did for drainage on Ball Bayou is already done, and it's <clears throat> it's getting ready to be implemented. I mean, mm -hmm. that's completed. Uh, they're getting ready to, 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 to dig uh, ball bayou to the necessary size and everything, so that that's being done. 
And I think what was happening, they had some questions during this, this whole period of time of us digging detention ponds all over the place for all the different businesses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and since uh, Bayou Ball was basically an area that has yet to be developed, it was something that, uh, you know, Bill was looking at is let's take a look at what's the difference if you have 10 businesses that built 10 detention ponds on their own property and each spent $10,000. Why couldn't a parish build one in an area and then everybody pay $10,000 and have their detention pond? And so it's something that would just be a lot more feasible because what ends up happening when each of the individuals start trying to do it we end up having to maintain it. And you got maintenance problems, you got other problems, and, and then the feasibility of doing it becomes a problem. And so it becomes a burden on, on that. So that's what they were looking into is something that people do all over the country is try to get basins, basin-wide detentions uh, ponds and that people would just buy. And the thing about it is you really don't have to make it mandatory and you really don't have to make it for the whole basin. You can put one that would have X amount and people could buy credits. And then when those credits are out, you build your own detention pond. So there's a lot of options. There's a million options you can do. And, uh, and, and just to look into it and try to free up some of these businesses from the burden of uh, a lot of these half acre, one acre, and two acre businesses from the burden of coming up with their detention ponds. And, and kind of to simplify it a little bit, but uh, what you what you are allowing a developer to do, um, in theory, is take take property that is of high commercial value. Mm -hmm. uh, parish would go and and develop these detention basins in a. It's going to be in a low area. That's where the water's draining to. Uh, often there's uh, 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 there's there's going to be uh, in a lower value property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the developer is going to end up coming out ahead because he gets to put his property into commercial use yeah. in, in general. That's, that's the just, a, just a quick question. Basically, what you're looking in there, and that's, that's for future things, and also you're looking at kind of incorporating that into the Con Conway Panama yes, sir. study. And that uh, the work you're doing to look at that is based on what you're doing for the Pontchartrain Levy District. Funded by the Pontchartrain Levy District. Which that study. Okay, because the Pontchartrain, uh, because Bayou Conway and Panama Canal will in th will be enclosed within the West Shore Hurricane Protection Levy. At once it mm -hmm. ultimately gets down here, we have to do a study to figure out what how to handle that drainage situation. Whether and we we just kicked that project off. Uh, we're looking at you know uh, uh, pumps or gravity. There's mm -hmm. you know we're just getting sure. into it. So. Good deal. Anybody else? I, I just want to. I understand it's a good conversation, uh, but Mr. Shakes not is right. I mean, we we have got the the master plan. We we got what we want to do. We, I don't want this to turn into we're going to dig ponds for all the businesses, no, sir. Uh, especially no. since most of them's in Gonzales. Yes, sir. Um, that's their problem, <laughs> well, and, and the it's their pays. it's their problem it's their problem to the point that they're the ones that's going to get the revenue off of it. I don't want the general public to, to think that we're going to start economic development by building a bunch of ponds yes. so that people can develop their property inside the city of Gonzales. Yes. They have their own planning zone and they deal with that situation. I don't remember seeing a whole lot of detention ponds in Gonzales. Yes, so so uh, I just want to stay the focus on Ball Bayou, making sure that it drains and and uh, and try to stay away from creating something with that. Uh, Absolutely. Made and, to, and in yeah. all fairness, uh, I believe the city, they, they pay into the East Central Gravity. I, I understand with, that, but, but, but we're going a different direction here. Sure. Let's drain. Yes, Very well. Anybody else? Uh, Jake, did, is that all you want to cover on all the projects that that's you had with the Punch Train Levy District? Yes, sir. That, that that's, we are that's it. Co-sponsoring. Yes, sir. Uh, any, obviously, any time you guys have any questions, anything y'all want to talk to us about, y'all know where we're at. Thank, Thank you, Jack. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you, Jack. Mr. President. I just wanted to talk to Mr. Rue a little bit about, uh, there was a statement about maybe looking at a bridge on 22. 22. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we put a million dollars for culverts. Last time I looked at a bridge on 22, it was about $5 million, and that was years and years ago. So 
I, I don't know if we can afford to make that switch at this but, point. Yes, sir, I agree, and and that's why we and uh, we talking to DOTD about maybe some kind of joint uh, venture, but. We always looking at the money. We have available funds, and whatever we can do with those available funds, get the most benefit from it. That's all we're going to do. That's our budget, and we got to live within our budget. Uh, we're looking at we're looking at options, Mr. President. That's all right. Uh, they're not against us putting covers, though. Well, in fact, that's what we're going for permitting for is the covers, right? Okay. Now. All right. Well, yeah. That's what we, we submitted. I need to think. We need to kind of stay on that. We up. have those sides and engineered. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Shakes, now, Tommy, are they? Uh, the, the projects that uh, they're doing in in the municipalities are they required to do the uh, follow our drainage plan with the detention ponds and everything? Yeah. Uh, are they actually doing it though? Well, I know I, some of them are getting permits and they're, and they're not doing it. And, and I understand where we we're going with this, and I think planning is actually uh, changing some of the the uh, language that they have to kind of allow for what uh, you you're speaking of. So. Again, uh, no, no. What I'm talking about is they have some businesses that are being allowed to get permits without having detention that we are requiring all the other businesses to do. Mr. Rue, yes, sir. Um, I can I can answer a little bit of it. The, we have a good relationship with the city, and what happens now, while the city is not completely obligated per hour. Uh, zoning planning and zoning regulations and the drainage ordinance they are referring to us uh, with all developments on our comments uh, for our drainage for that development and when we say uh, that it needs a certain amount of detention that they are going along with us and telling the developer to that they have to uh, abide by our decision the drainage board decision to put in certain amount of detention uh, and that's happening but ultimately, it's the town council can overrule us and give a permit to a development without detention. But so far, in the last couple of years, uh, on plans going through the, the, uh, the city, they have uh, uh, given us the authority to dictate to the developments what draining needs are, are, are required. And they've done that on all the properties? On the new ones that's going through over the last couple of years, and we have a couple. I, I tell you, one exactly is is, uh, is being held up because of that. It's one right by the old bean factory, mm -hmm. and we told them there that they needed a detention, and uh, and so that's holding up a small project. And we're telling them that the property owner needs to go ahead and put in an area detention for his whole development. So each individual, he sells off lots, three or four lots. Each one of them don't have to put up a detention. Okay. That let him supply that and let them pay him for that benefit. He can up the price on the property. Yeah. But that's how we're working with the city on on, uh, on on just about every commercial development going through right now. Thank you. But we make it clear that bound by law that the municipalities are not bound by our zoning requirements. They're not bound by our, our rules within East Cinchin Gravity Drainage District. They're, they're bound by the drainage rules if, in fact, the drainage board passed an ordinance. Of course, you're not able to. Right. But if, if you're, uh, you make a, a, a rule, they're obligated to follow that rule. But the drainage ordinance is actually a parish planning right. ordinance, and they're not 100% um, obligated to do it. But they are doing it. They are, uh, as you. it pertains to drainage, they're compliant. Right. Any, anything else? Anybody? One, one quick thing, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Rue, on uh, for Mr. Jimmy Gale, the survey, and where are we at on that? Yeah, we're moving forward with it. Um, it we had several issues. We're trying to uh, help Mr. Gale out on an immediate, uh, um, I guess, help on that ditch. Uh, our ultimate goal, though, is to, and I think we, the survey may be complete on Jimmy Gale. We have to redesign it today. Redesign? Okay. We're just about complete with the, uh, Mr. Allred said, just about complete with the survey and because of the redesign. But uh, again, we're going back to our ultimate goal is to tie in uh, uh, Tiger Lewis Road into Keystone Ditch and Keystone Ditch into Mr. Gale's Ditch and on to the lateral going into Henderson Bayou. And Mr. Gale's okay with that. Uh, we're going to do some covert work uh, as soon as the uh, survey is complete. We get a design. 
Thank you so much. The other thing on Muddy Creek, we will have that for October or November, the RFQs. We should have it this month, the RFQs in, and then it'll go to our re re review process uh, with our committee. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Mr. Rue, I only have one thing on the new work order systems that we've, uh, we've integrated. Will we be start seeing the reports exactly in the same format that we're seeing through DPW? I'm you have you have a uh, what what you have in your hand is some of the cartograph system okay. reports, you know, as it pertains to drainage. And again, it, you know, it's, it's a little bit different what we do compared to road department yeah. in the types of uh, activities because almost every one of our uh, work orders go through a series of different departments. You know, it, it'll have to go through right of way, then it have to go through um, engineering, and then it gets back to a work request and back to a work order. Uh, but we're working with that, and I, we believe that by the first of the year that we're going to have a model um, program, cartograph program, that uh, that uh, the parish will start looking at for us implementing parish-wide. Yeah, I'm just looking at, divide, say, divided by council districts. And oh, yeah. No, that's that's we have the ability to do that right signs. now. Right. Someone and ultimately, I'll tell you something, out at least. Right, something else. We're modifying everything every day. Uh, by the first year, we hopefully hopefully we'll have all of this on our website also, so everybody can see the current status of uh, work orders strictly through the uh, website. Okay. So we're working on getting all of that those things going. Thank you, sir. We're going through a planning process. All right, Mr. Rudy, do you have anything else? I, just one real quick. We did have activities at the pumping station Saturday. Right. Uh, we had the southeast wind blowing, holding up elevation there. And with the real uncertainty of the weather um, during the weekend, we decided to mobilize. Mr. Allred uh, had people out, and uh, we pumped the elevation down to a low level to drain the upper part of the parish. Uh, we kept it like that all day, worked until about 6 that afternoon. And until the we saw where the, the impact from the weather wasn't, would not be as severe as we first thought, and then we left it like it is. Um, and then luckily we did not have the rainfall as predicted or as much as some areas of the, of the state. But we were prepared, and we did send notifications out to the parish president and the chairman uh, telling them what we were doing. And uh, we just wanted to get ahead of the game. The only other thing, one real quick deal, we're getting a lot of work order requests and this always happens when we have a lot of dry weather. We had a wet weather this past week, but prior to that, it's been predominantly dry uh, through most of the year. When that happens, most of our work our requests coming in daily has to do not with stormwater runoff, stormwater uh, drainage, it has to do with sewage. So we get into that situation, it's not something that we can get out there and handle easily. Most of the time, it's not a whole lot we can do. People want the, really the water from the ditch drained. Obviously, you don't have any rain for six months. The only water there is sewer water. The grass is growing. And most of the time, we have to hand clean those ditches. It's very time consuming, and it's something that, that we, don't, uh, we don't try to get into as, if, you know, if at all possible. But when we get into drainage issues, a lot of that has to do with that situation. And that's what's been happening over the last few months up until now. Actually, the rain helped that situation because it washes it on out, and it eases the, the process a little well, bit. Hopefully, one day we'll have all the hopefully sewer in and the, the parish, parish president and, uh, uh, will have that in Get the uh, our sewer system going, then we we okay with that. <laughs> one quick question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Lambert. Yeah, Bill, talking about when we turn the pumps on, you reckon the rest of the board could get a, maybe an email sent to them? Because we get a lot of calls in from constituents when all the pumps Absolutely. running or something. And to I that tell effect. you what I can do, and and. Uh, uh, Part of this, you know, I usually send it out over our uh, the um, you, you know BlackBerry on it. and stuff like that. So it's a little yeah. bit harder to, to set up a pro but I can set up a group and just send it to the group. Appreciate just, it uh, at one time. Thank that's you, Bill. No problem. And that's all my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? We'll move on to item number seven: authorization to accept project. 1603 N-5005-0003 elevation award in amount of $400,199 and authorize the parish president to execute all documents relating to the grant. Ms. Martha Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. President Martinez, I'm here tonight to ask you to 
accept this award and to, uh, as the chairman said, to execute, allow the parish president to execute the contract to go forward. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Bell, second by John. Mr. Valentine. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Move on to item number eight. The cooperative endeavor agreement between East Ascension Drainage District and West Ascension Drainage District for reimbursement of costs related to the debris removal and monitoring related services. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. As you know, we're going through the NRCS contract. Well, when NRCS first came out with this proposal, they included Bayou McCall and Bayou Verrett on the West, in the West Ascension District. Uh, we went ahead with a, a, a contract with CDM to do East Ascension, of course, a contract between East Ascension Gravity Drainage District and CDM. And uh, since West Ascension is a separate entity, what we're asking to do now is for us and, and West Ascension to enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement where we'll go ahead and manage the project, pay CDM, and get all reimbursement from NRCS pertaining to all the bayous. Anything that's not uh, in that reimbursement, uh, amount, uh, some from uh, NRCS will be reimbursed by West Ascension Drainage. It's the most efficient and cost-saving uh, uh, move that we can make, and we ask for authorization Moved to do that. The second. A motion by Mr. Shakespeare, a second by Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. We we'll move on to item number nine. Authorization to amend the contract between CDM and East Ascension Drainage District Number One for debris removal, monitoring, and related services to add West Ascension Drainage debris removal services to that contract. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. A motion by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Benny Johnson. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Move on to item number 10. Authorization to contract with Russ's Trucking for hauling of surplus spoil dirt on an as need basis as part of the major channel improvement so program. Moved, so moved, Second. So moved. Motion by Mr. Uh, Shakes, not a second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carried. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Pat Bell. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carried.